Welcome back. Now, a movie from ENCA's sister company, EVOD, is making waves internationally. Vusi Africa's film, Surviving Gaza, has won three African Movie Award, uh, Academy Awards, rather, including Best Director nod uh, for him. It's a personal story, though, uh, for Africa, who grew up in what was then called Woodbank. Now, the movie is about the journey, though, of the 17-year-old Pussy who dreams of a better life, but is faced with tough choices when he gets into trouble with local gangsters. Now, Africa joins us in studio now to discuss the film and also the wins because his win is the country's win is the continent's win and welcome to it congratulations <laughs> thank you so much Dumela. Thank i you. am so proud of you i mean for someone that's been following your journey this has been long overdue a long time coming and what do these three awards mean for you i mean best sound best visual effects best director this is huge we'll see <laughs> it's just huge. Yeah, I mean, um, it, it, uh, it, is a, it is a big achievement, mm. you know. Um, and I think for me, the most um, outstanding thing was um, the movies that I was, in, I was nominated um, alongside mm. with, which are movies from Uganda, Tanzania, um, and Ghana. And these are all movies that have been selected in their respective countries right. um, as their official Oscar entries. Mm. So I was competing with movies that are going to the Oscars. So this win is, yeah. It's a big one. <laughs> it's a big win. It it's is. a big one. So, so let's talk about, you know, the movie, if someone hasn't watched Surviving Gaza, which we're going to talk about uh, how you can also find it on uh, EVOD now. What's the movie all about? Well, this, I mean, this is a personal story um, for me. And because uh, I, I grew up, I grew up in a place called Whitbank, mm. which is, um, which is in Pumalanga right now. It's called the Malasheni. Um, and in Wakuka, in the township called Salangasa, which was known as Gaza, mm. you know. And um, I think growing up, there was just so many things that were happening, you know, around me. And I think the most outstanding thing was the conditions that we found ourselves in. Right. You know, it was a crime-infested area. You know, it was a gang-infested area. Mm. And... Um, but irrespective of that, you know, I was surrounded by friends who had dreams, who had passions, who had ambitions. And Puzo was one of my friends right. growing up, you know, and um, this is his story. And uh, the challenges that he was facing of wanting to achieve his dream, but finding himself caught up in this petty crime incidences that are happening around him and still having to survive that mm. on top of being raised by a grandmother and a grandfather and you know um, having to deal with being an orphan and in a, in a situation mm. that is not welcoming or grooming to a young black person. Mm -hmm. I think the story is about that. You know, the story is about young people who are faced with difficult challenges right. wanting to do something better for themselves. It's actually relatable. As you're speaking more and more about the movie, I'm thinking so many South Africans, uh, young black South Africans particularly can relate uh, to the story. Was this intentional? Did you want to almost appeal uh, to that relatability, uh, obviously, that most people will find in the film? Uh, did you want to draw more inspiration? Is there more of a success story out of the movie to say, hey, even if you're in this situation, there is a light at the end of the tunnel? I think for me, the, more, the most important thing um, or my message that I wanted to relay in this particular story was the reluctance I have with accepting that uh, black people somehow need to move away from the atrocity, atrocities of apartheid or the legacies, or rather forget about the legacies mm. of apartheid, right? And I think this movie um, shows you the legacy of apartheid. Got you. Without, without us saying this is what apartheid did, you know, these are the situations that black people find themselves, or without showing you white people um, oppressing black people in that condition. We're mm -hmm. showing you the, the ultimate results, which were black people being moved from, um, from where they were staying into townships. Mm. And what became of the townships? Nobody speaks about what became of the townships. Mm. You know? And I think this movie is about that. It's about the end result of the move to the townships. The poverty that the townships created. Right. The crime that the townships created. And as a country, we have a big problem of crime. You know? and, and often it is blamed on black people. But it is not said that it is the move to the township. Mm that created crime. And the because... conditioning, I suppose, which was they had to find themselves in under those circumstances. I'm just wondering as well, as you try to address these challenges in the movie, what challenges did you come across, if any, as a filmmaker? It could be resources, <laughs> I don't know what you came across, technical challenges. I mean, what did you have to go through? Was this more of a smooth sailing for you to well, get this movie done? <laughs> it's always difficult making a film, sure. you know, uh, 
particularly the type of films that I make, you know, because they are not made at, at the back street of Santin, you know, um, you know, where there's fully running electricity mm. and KFC is just the walk away, yeah. you know. I make films in the most uncomfortable places. And I think, um, you know, making this film also, it was, you know, it was, it was an awakening for the crew because it was sort of like we're making Surviving Gaza in Gaza, you know, because the place where we shot the film um, itself had the same problems that we were discussing in the film. So you yourselves were trying to survive. We were trying to survive on Gaza. set. I yeah. mean, there's so many things that happened. I don't know if you know, maybe, maybe the time 10 years later will come for me to talk about some of the things that, that, that happened behind the scenes, mm. you, know, um, you know. But I think it was a huge challenge. It was a huge challenge yeah. making this film. And most likely was dealing with a community that is, um, that is, that is impoverished and trying to survive. And us coming in as filmmakers wanting to extract gold gotcha. how do we how do we work together with the community how gotcha. do we create a relationship so that the film can happen and the community can survive so i think this 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 is the process that i mm. went through in this film and i sort of had to you know stumble um upon but learn right also as to how to collaborate with communities yeah, so it could be mutually beneficial for both you as the Definitely. filmmaker right and, and the community members now we're talking about just those challenges uh, in the context of you making the film but overall in general um how is the film industry in terms of supporting you as filmmakers and yourself and your experience because you just mentioned earlier that you were competing with other countries uh, that are due, of course, to uh, head over to the Oscars. And I just wonder if the same support do you receive in South Africa as, as filmmakers? Is it satisfactory? Uh, well, I can't complain about the support. You know, uh, I mean, um, I, I started I started my my film career about five years ago um, when I when I broke in with Letters of Hope, mm. and I think um, I mean it's a, it is a difficult industry. But I think as an independent filmmaker, I understand my position. You know, I understand mm. that my job is to go through the difficulties. You know, my job is to hustle the funding. My job is to you know um, have those challenges that um, somehow prevent me from making the next film and I think that is always the story of success so whoever is always looking at the industry from an outsider's view mm. and maybe anticipating to maybe want to come in you have to always have you know that space left in your heart to fight mm. you know to go through challenges to go through difficult moments and um, most importantly not to give up and to just you know keep a straight head yeah. all the time because what you are doing is important. And remember, films last a lifetime. Right. Surviving Gaza was made three years ago. Um, two years later, it's still, you know, it's making um, headwaves, yeah. making headwaves yeah. around the world. So films last a lifetime. And mm. something that lasts a lifetime has to be fought for. It doesn't mm. come easy. It is your legacy. It is your After legacy. All. And I think I absolutely agree with you in saying that, uh, you know, it's a conscious decision you have to make as a filmmaker to take on the tough, you know, decisions, especially also for your team. They rely on you and, and your leadership. But I want to also get into some of the team uh, members that you work with, casting for this movie. Who are some of the amazing people that you have worked with that portray the roles and, you know, the realities that you aim for with Surviving Gaza? You know, my biggest secret as a filmmaker is my, it, it's my, um, my understanding of collaborations, right? Mm -hmm. um, I collaborate in the script writing process, I'm collaborating. In the casting process, I'm collaborating. I'm always consulting the best minds mm. in that particular department, you know? So, um, so for me, with the casting process, I, 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 um, I sat down with a friend of mine uh, mm -hmm. by the name of Kelvin Ratlady. I think those, those that are in the space uh, might know him. And, I mean, Kelvin is in the theatre space. So in the theatre space, there's that rawness of mm. actors. You know, actors who, who are about the craft and they just want to act, you right. know. They, they don't want to be, you know, on TV or the so famous. Or, fame. No, yeah. no, they don't care about that. Mm. They just want to act, you know. And so Kelvin introduced me to those names, you know, and brought those names in the table. And so we had an opportunity to sort of, you know, look at some of the best raw talent mm. in the country. And that is how we discovered Bukhali Masango, you know, uh, who is a raw, raw diamond, you know. And also um, Inda Lostafile, mm. you know, is an award-winning actress from captain i mean these are these are never been seen before wow. you know actors uh, who are doing amazing stuff you right. know so i think the collaborations that i'm always engaging in in terms of you know identifying the best talent the best cinematographer the best people yes. those for me are the strongest um pillars that i have mm. in terms of my approach to my work so it's never just vusi africa um alone doing everything alone um it should it should show on the yeah, screen yeah it should show i think after this conversation 
mean, I, I should see hashtag open up the industry trading, <laughs> uh, because that's exactly <laughs> what I'm hearing from you. Vusi, I have to let you go, but we can find the film on EVOD, right? Most definitely. The film is still on EVOD, and we are coming to JFF. So okay. if those are, uh, there's still some people who want to see the film on the big screen, we are coming to JFF next year. The dates are going to be on social media, so everybody can just stay tuned to the EVOD page and the Vusi Africa page, and then we can keep um, everyone updated. Once again, congratulations. Super proud Thank of you. you and all the best. Uh, keep collecting those awards. The film being made three years ago, still making headwaves uh, two years later. We still want to have this conversation about Surviving Gaza in many more years to come. Vusi, <laughs> thank you so much for your time. Surviving Gaza director, Vusi Africa.